What's up gang, Craze here with yet again another guide for Red Dead Redemption 2 and today I want to cover everything you need to know about hunting in this game. Now it might not look like a big deal at first and you can certainly skip this mechanic entirely but hunting provides some very powerful benefits no matter if you're just starting out right now or are later into the game. It gives you meat to cook for yourself or bring at the camp to keep it up running, pelts to craft cool pieces of gear or furniture and if you're planning to go to the next level and do legendary animal hunting you're also looking at some amazing outfits but most important of all some very powerful trinkets that will give you some very powerful stat boosts but let's start things off with the basics because I feel a lot of people have gotten this all wrong and I am seeing way too many guides out there bringing incomplete or downright wrong information in terms of regular game hunt you'll want to get the best possible pelts of after killing and skinning an animal and that's pretty much the gist of it. There are three levels of quality that pelts in Red Dead Redemption 2 can have which is also indicated by the number of stars they have next to their names. We have one star for poor quality, two stars for good quality and finally three stars for perfect quality. And generally speaking you'll want to aim for a perfect three star quality pelt as most high-end craftables require these anyway. The poor quality pelts are pretty much useless list, they don't get used in any of the recipes nor do they fetch a good price at the market and the good ones can certainly have uses in some certain places but for the most part you'll want the perfect ones and this is what this guide will be focused upon. But what most people get wrong here is the fact that the quality of the pelt is dependent entirely on the shot placement and that is simply not true. This is just a small part of a bigger picture and there are many more variables involved that you need to look out for in order to ensure you always get a perfect quality pelt. These are the specimen quality, weapon and ammo used, shot placement and finally if the shot was fatal or not. I'm going to start things off with the specimen quality and this is the first thing you'll ever want to check before even setting your eyes on a target. Just like how pelts have a star rating, each creature out there in the wild also has one and you can see it next to their name, assuming of course you also inspected them in the process. In case you didn't, whenever you want to hunt a certain animal you can check it out with your binoculars or a rifle scope and one of the informations being shown will also be the star rating which will be right next to the name of the creature. It appears on the left side of its name and you can see the number of stars in there and there can be anywhere between one or three stars. Only a three star animal can yield a three star perfect pelt. A two star or a one star will only ever yield either a good or a poor quality pelt respectively. So whenever you find a herd of multiple specimens you want to hunt, always pull out your binoculars or scoped weapons and check the info next to its name to see if it has 3 stars or less. If it's a 3 star rating then go ahead and hunt it down, if it's lower then pretty much disregard it completely because this is not something you'll want to do. Some groups might not even have 3 star quality specimens so you can completely skip them but most of the time you will find at least a couple of them in any big group. The next thing you need to be looking at is the type type of weapon that you want to use in order to execute a perfect kill. For this make sure to open the show info window using the binoculars, scopes or when being close enough to the animal itself and the text that appears on the left corner of the screen will tell you exactly what weapon you need to use in order to get the best quality pelt. Luckily enough you'll generally know what creature requires what weapon and there's even a neat table put together that indicates what weapon you'll want to use for each type of animal and generally speaking there are five categories of animals depending on their size. We have small ones, moderate, medium, large and finally massive ones and for small category for example we have stuff like small reptiles, snakes, rodents, small birds and so on and this will require small game arrow to get a perfect pelt otherwise it will pretty much get ruined. For moderate size we have birds like eagles, cranes, hawks, we even have rabbits, raccoons, skunks and so on and for these you'll want to use a vermin rifle to get a perfect pelt because pretty much everything else is either 
too big or too small to get them, so it pretty much ruins the pelt itself. For medium creatures such as a coyote, foxes, pigs, beavers and so on, you can either use a normal bow and arrow or a repeater. It doesn't really matter what type of ammo the repeater is using, they all work just fine as long as it's a critical and fatal hit, which I'll be going over in just a second. Large creatures are the box, deer, wolves, cougars and so on and you'll generally see these more often all over the place. For these a normal bow and arrow are simply not enough and you'll want to use either a poison arrow to ensure the animal dies quickly or a rifle with any type of ammo. You still need to have good enough weapon to take it down in one shot and not ruin the pelt in the process. Finally we have the massive animals such as bisons, bears, elks, moose, big alligators and so on and these require either improved arrows or sniper rifles to ensure a 100% chance that you get a perfect skin out of them. You can think of it this way, if the animal is too big for the animal size it will ruin the pelt completely and it's pretty much useless. If on the other side it's too small it will not be enough to kill it in one shot, that's why you need to have the proper weapon upon yourself if you want to do it properly. But yeah these are of course the general rules for a 100% guaranteed chance for you to get a perfect pelt and you don't necessarily have to use the exact weapon that is highlighted in red but you can use others as as well. So for example, for massive specimens you can also use a normal rifle, it doesn't necessarily have to be scoped. Going back to the same table we've seen, you most probably realized by now that all perfect pelts result from critical and fatal shots. What this means is simple and it works two ways. First your shot has to be aimed towards a critical spot such as for example the animal's brain, heart or stomach and later on into the game when you level your dead eye to level 3 at least, you'll even be able to see these critical spots being highlighted on the animal body itself. Second of all, you will want this shot to be fatal as in it has to kill the animal on the spot. The best course of action here is of course to aim for the head and use the appropriate caliber weapon. You won't even need that eye in this case to see its critical spot and even if you didn't level it up enough, it's easy enough of a concept to grasp, all you need to do is aim for that head, shoot a powerful enough weapon and if it's dead in one go, it's pretty much good to go. If instead you're using a lower caliber weapon that doesn't kill the creature immediately or if you miss a vital organ then this can make it cause to flee in fear and bleed out until it drops down. When this happens you can see its trails turning red rather than blue and after a short distance it will pretty much drop on the ground and still struggle for like a few more minutes until it completely bleeds out and of course you can also perform a mercy killing on it but yeah the pelt is pretty much ruined in this condition and you can pretty much leave it there. And these are the things you need to keep in mind in order to ensure a 100% success rate in skinning a perfect pelt. But now that you kinda know the basics, let's move on to the process itself and how you should approach hunting to avoid frustration and to make it as easy and fun as possible. As you might have realized by now, there's always something distracting your creatures and making them flee in fear. Either someone coming up the road, either you being sensed by them and sometimes they just get scared from one another and that is pretty annoying as well which is of course something that you'll want to avoid most of the time. Well to start things off what you'll want to do first and foremost is to have the appropriate weapon upon yourself so you don't need to constantly go back to your horse and exchange it for a better one. Second of all always apply a scent hiding cream that you can buy from the general store so that no creature can sense you and smell you from the distance and if you do this you'll pretty much be able to get quite close to them without being detected, of course as long as you don't make noise. Third of all, don't just jump into the middle of the herd and expect to catch something, instead scout them from afar using your binoculars or your scopes, so it's pretty useful, you can also see their stats, their star rating and so on, what weapons required and of course you can also like plan out your entire hunting session if you're a little bit far away. Once that is taken care of, make sure you're crouching and going as 
slowly as possible to not make any noise depending on the distance you have from your target. If you're further away you can definitely sprint for a little bit but if you're like a few meters away then you should like move silently and slowly like a cat. When you're in the perfect position to take the shot aim your weapon and press square on your controller to attract its attention. What this does is that it will basically make the animal raise its head leaving it pretty much open to a perfect shot in a vital organ especially in the head area and you can also further combine this with a quick dead eye to slow down time in case you're in your beginning stages and you haven't yet adapted to the fast pace of this. You can also use the world map to your advantage to see exactly what animals spawn in what regions and after you start discovering more of it you'll definitely see certain areas that are rich in certain types of creatures. So for example you will see the plains being more filled with bisons or the forest areas being more filled with deer and elks. Now let's say you're in a more crowded area that tends to have creatures spooked more frequently such as for example a small section near a road or a town. Normally you'd have a very hard time catching anything as there's always something scaring them. What you want to do instead is to set up lures to have the animals come to you instead of you going up to them. At every general store or trapper you'll be able to find lures for both predators and herbivores and depending on what you want to hunt you'll want to use either the one or the other. To pull this off simply set down the bait, step back like 10 meters or so, crouch so you don't stick like a sore thumb and wait for the creatures to make their way to the delicious treats you've just set up. From here you can align everything perfectly and by the time the creature even realizes what's going on it's pretty much already skinned with the pelt already on the back of your horse ready to be brought in at a trapper or a fencer. And before going over these two points by the way I first want to go over the last piece of today's hunting lesson and that is of course legendary animal hunting. And legendary animals are pretty much something that you'll want to do at some point because as I've said there are very powerful benefits to it. This is a different ball game, it has its own set of rules and there is a limited amount of legendary specimens on the map that you can hunt. What this means is that once you kill the specimen it will never respawn again and you won't be able to skin it again and seeing how these mechanics work it makes me doubt that this will ever change. So whenever you kill a legendary animal make sure you don't lose its pelt or forget to skin it because it will be pretty much gone. Access to legendary creatures will happen quite early into the game starting with the first few missions in chapter 2. The first legendary creature you'll ever hunt down is a huge bear and these creatures in general can one shot you at any time or at the very least completely mess you up if you're not careful. Also early on you'll get access to a map of most legendary creatures in the game and you can check it out in your satchel in the documents slash map section and this will give you a general location where you can find legendary creatures on the map and you can move on to the in-game map after that to set up the markers. But yeah if you already discovered the map itself it will already show you what legendary creatures there are. Once you move near its layer or habitat, unlike normal hunting, you will need to start a sequence of discovering certain clues. If you cannot find the clues as soon as you reach that, simply roam around for a little bit, circle the area around until you find a question mark where the trail begins. The game will also prompt you with a message saying that you've entered legendary animal area on top left corner of your screen and it will pretty much give you all sorts of indications from there on in case for example it's crowded and you need to wait out. Simply follow the clues which should be no more than a handful and be ready to put down whatever is there as soon as possible. Unlike normal game, legendary creatures don't have a pelt rating, they always drop legendary pelt quality so you won't have to care about the shot placement, you won't have to care about the weapons used, about the number of shots, in fact you won't even be able to insta kill a legendary creature regardless so what you want to do is grab a huge weapon no matter what you get, a rifle, a shotgun, mark it down as much as you can with your dead eye and try to kill it before it jumps on you and pretty much mangles your face. But yeah, once you do that, go ahead and skin it and you will get a bunch of pelts from it, also some animal parts and here is where the fun begins because you will be able to use these to give you powerful trinkets and some very awesome outfits. And you do this at pretty much the fencer and here is where you find most of the useful stuff but you can also use stuff like bones or teeth or heart for example to make trinkets that give you very powerful bonuses. But again, this is all the time we have for today. If you enjoyed this video, then a like and a subscribe would be super appreciated. Also, don't forget about the notification.
notification bell and I will see you guys in the next time so peace out